Good day, friends. Welcome back to the channel. It's given again from TechnoDrive. Um, today we've got the Kodak inverter. It's a five kilowatt inverter. I'm going to test it so that we can see. But um, just a brief explanation on our company. Sometimes uh, it might take long for us to issue a video. Uh, the reason is some of the repairs are not easy, and also you will find that the customer is is waiting there. So if the customer is waiting and the, you try and shoot a video, it's not going to be easy for us. So if we have to repair the, the, the inverter while the customer is waiting, obviously the video won't be possible. And also our business, we uh, don't only fix inverters, we also fix televisions. And also we have a department where we sell spare parts of uh, all electronics, like the TVs and all inverters, as you see. So if you want spare parts, you can check the link on the description. Then you can get whatever you want. Done, or done with that. Let's uh, check the inverter and see what, what's going on. So as I've explained to you, this inverter, it's a 5 kilowatt inverter. It's a OG 5.48. So OG 5.48 is a 5,000 watts. So that, there is all the information on the inverter. So this inverter, I've already tested it. It has got an error... 09 f09 let's plug it and see okay check there you will see when it comes on it shows f09 you see there f09 okay so this F09 is caused by the short circuit inside the inverter. Okay, I've already done some videos on the F09, but to today I'm going to explain more on the difference between the high frequency inverter and low frequency inverter so that you can understand why these inverters they keep on giving F09. So on the on on the inverter market there's two types of inverters. There's low frequency and high frequency inverter so this one is a high frequency inverter they both uh, give uh, 230 volts out but the the technology that the manufacturer used is different so the low frequency it's more robust so low frequency inverter they, they are very very robust let me show you uh, one of the example of the low frequency inverter you can see this this one this one is a low frequency inverter so this one is it's actually called the transformer based inverter because the components are not as much as the high frequency inverter you can see on the low frequency you only have got this board and the transformer and then you've got your output there so there is your dc coming in there is the mosfets underneath there then it goes to the transformer and then it's out so there's no much components so this inverter it's more robust because you can connect uh, pumps and uh, you can also connect geyser it's, it's more robust but these high frequency inverters they are not uh, more uh, robust like the the low frequency one let me show you i've got the board here basically uh, Let's just open the inverter and then you can see the difference. I'm going to pause the video. Okay, I've got the inverter open. Uh, let's go to the inverter. Okay, there is the inverter. It's open now. As I've mentioned, this one is a high frequency inverter. You can see there, our transformer is very small. So this one is not as big as the other one you can see there we've got a big transformer there so these inverters they are they, they are they are heavy if you lift the lift them up you will feel that this inverter is heavy once the inverter is heavy like that it tells you that it's a a low frequency inverter because of the transformer the transformer is very heavy so if you've got a transformer you are using a low frequency inverter so these inverters, like I've already explained, they are used in um, 
place where you've got surges you must remember like let's say for example you've connected your um, aircon on the high frequency inverter you've got the risk of damaging the inverter i'm going to explain to you why i'm saying that but this one because you've got a transformer if there's a surge like you must remember the pump when it starts it draws a lot of current so that inrush current it causes the the inverter to to fail at some stage especially with the high frequency inverter but if you've got this type of uh, inverter the chances of it failing they are very slim because they are transformer based inverter you can use them on high surges like the air cons, like the pool pump although you can use high frequency inverters on those but um it's, it's, it's always it's a risk you know high frequencies they are good for on the small appliances like tvs and light electronics you can use them for high demands but the, the risk of burning it it's it's high okay let's go back to the high frequency we are now on low frequency let me show you the high frequency i will explain to you why we have the that f09 okay i've got this board here uh let's, let me show you the board okay i'm going to explain more on the high frequency i've got this board here uh let's fix a little bit of focus here okay you can see on this board we've got the a small transformer this one it's a high frequency i'm going to explain to you you see most of the inverters that we repair they are high frequency because of what I've just explained now, the risk of damaging it. Okay, here you've got the two points, which is your DC coming in, where the 48 volts comes in here. And then you've got this side, this side, the, the MOSFETs. These are the low voltage MOSFET. They change the voltage uh, from uh, 48 volts with the help of this transformer to these two large capacitors this is your dc bus link so you've got your 48 volts there it will be converted but at a high frequency not at a low frequency so you you, you are obviously going to have the voltage there on the capacitors but this voltage is now going to be larger it's going to be 400 volts you've got your 400 volts there and then this side it's your igbt's these are the most critical components on the inverter so this is basically your inverter so you've got that 400 volts in but these mosfets these igbt's they change the 400 volts into a ac so you, you rely mostly on these uh, transistors remember that other 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 inverter you rely mostly on this uh, transformer. You don't rely on uh, transistors. You rely on the transformer. So this one, we have to be sure that this they don't get damaged. So these IGBTs, they are very, very fragile. If you connect something with that, there's got uh, too much surge uh, current, you, you risk of damaging the IGBTs. There's another customer, they just shorted out the, 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 the output by mistake. Then the IGBTs got damaged. But the transformer one, there's no way that you can bend the transformer by shorting it. So that's the risk that it's uh, there on the high frequency inverters. Although the, 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 the advantage on these inverters is that they are economical. They are not as expensive as the high frequency the low frequency inverters the high frequency they are more affordable so that's why most of the people they use uh, them to to run their appliances so le let's see on the schematic uh, or the block diagram so that you can understand more on high frequency inverters okay i've got the um, uh, basic uh, block diagram of the inverter there you can see this is how you normally connect it you've got your solar panels coming in you've got the utility you've got the load and you've got the battery 
So the inverter is basically this type, this uh, on this block here. This is your inverter. So on the inverter, you're going to have the control, you're going to have the solar charger, going to have the those MOSFET for charging and discharging, and the parallel board. You see that board that you connect to parallel the inverters. So if you go down, you will see on this manual the boards that we, we've got there. There is uh, our control board. There is the MPPT board, this is the charging board, and the parallel board is located here. So on the other inverters, the parallel board is next to the uh, DC terminals. Okay, so if you go down, you can see this is the inverter. You see those all, all other, those lots of components. This is the reason why they fail because they, they've got lots of uh, components you know if you've got lots of things you're gonna have lots of problems so that other inverter is just having a small uh, few components then you you run for some years with no problem but these ones uh, high frequency inverters they've got problems so on the inverter you also have this uh, control card sometimes when those mosfet or the igbt damage they can damage these components there so you might we might need to change the the card if the error is still there so let's go down this is the mppt board you can see there this one the mppt board has got the different connection there's one that goes to the main board to tell the the, the inverter what voltage is it on and um, what uh, uh, temperature is there and all other things that is needed by the inverter so that it can charge properly and then uh, we've got the um, solar coming in on our MPPT board there you see okay let's go down I want to show you some of the reason why the inverters they they fail you see these uh, capacitors there uh, the, the capacitors they tend to to fail but the the, the the only problem is that when these capacitors fail they don't go alone they damage other components because you must remember these capacitors are there to smooth the voltage so if this capacitor is now open or like this you see this one is popped out so the voltage is no longer smooth so what about the components that are connected there obviously they they, they will get uh, damaged so if you change this capacitor obviously you, you you will have to check also if the components around that circuit are okay so this is one of the reason why these inverters they, they they give problems so let me go back to that kodak inverter you can see i want to show you the the same thing like this then you can see what could have caused the problem okay i'm now on our kodak inverter you can see this is our inverter so this is the same inverter that gave the era 9 okay uh, let me take it down so that you can see uh, one of the cause of this f09 uh, let's check out this cover I've got the cover out let me show you one of the component that failed here okay yeah take a look at this component you see there this one is no longer as flat as it's supposed to be look at this other one see these ones they are flat but this one it's it, it's actually popped up a little bit let me just turn it so that you can see from the other angle see there you can see that capacitor it popped up so it's the same picture as what I've just showed you there that um, these inverters they can uh, give you problems let me just look at that picture okay there is the 
the, the picture that I, I wanted to show you. You can see there, we are having that uh, popped up uh, capacitance. So this affects all other components because the, the voltage is no longer as smooth as, as it's supposed to be. Uh, let me show you once again there. You can see it's a similar uh, incident here. Let's just check there. Okay, you can see this. This is not right. So when this capacitor failed, it obviously affected the high voltage uh, IGBTs. They, they've got a short circuit now. We are going to fix that. But um, I'm sure you've seen uh, what could be the cause uh, uh, of these uh, inverters to fail. So we have to fix this inverter. Unfortunately, uh, I won't be long on this video. I'm just going to strip it then you can fix it if you want to check how we fix f09 there is an, a, a video that uh, i've made on kodak just check there uh, I, I i did the whole video with the help of all the tools that i've got here we remove all the mosfets and all other components uh, that were were damaged so this inverter f09 uh, i'm sure we're gonna sort it out and then uh, it can go back to the client but today i was just more interested in showing you uh, what's the reason mostly the, the 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 most important thing that you should know on the inverters two different things that you should know there's high frequency inverters and low frequency inverters which one is good i would prefer a low frequency because of the risk uh, very minimum but the problem is it, co it costs a lot to, to get that inverter. Low frequency inverters, they are very costly. If the budget is not good like myself, <laughs> uh, we have to buy these inverters because of the budget. You know, most of the inverters that are on the market, they are at high frequency. We use them a lot. They work, but the, those slim risks that we have with them, they, they cause the inverters to fail example the lux power it's a high frequency inverter although they've got uh, some low frequencies but the common one uh, the lux power common one let me show you the okay there is the lux power this is one of the common inverter it's a sna 5000 this is one of the common inverters that the uh, most of the customers they use this inverter and it's 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 it's, it's not uh, uh, common for it to fail but you know those uh, minimum risk they cause them to fail i've also uh, posted a video before on this lux power we repaired one uh, lux power before it was also short circuit on the igbt's and mosfet you can check the videos so i've i've got the link as well if you want to check you can have a look there and also one of the common inverter is this one it's a high frequency this one but it's good and the Growart, this one is SPF 5000, 5000 ES, so it's one of the common inverter, it's 5 kilowatt as well, we've done lots of repairs on this one, so we we, we, we know the, 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 the high frequencies are there and on the market, that's why we fix them, we know what to do, what's needed and uh, what can fail and what's the reason it failed, so if you've got problems trying to fix the inverter and you're not winning you can send them to us who can help you so also this one the the the, the kodak it's not like it fails easily they do fail but uh, you know these electronics sometimes they they give trouble so i'm i'm just i think today we're gonna close the video i'm gonna work on this inverter unfortunately uh, i won't be able to show the video um on this uh, uh, same video i'm gonna shoot another video to show you how we can sort out but if you've got uh, any uh, questions you can ask there on the comments thank you very much